driver or teacher. Yeah. And we try not to um, change the times, you know, earlier than they are with any of the people that were, you know, the kids that we're picking up. So, like, say that 7.30 kid, well, I'm picking up another kid. Well, that kid at 7.30, I'm still going to pick him up at 7.30. I'm not going to try at 7.25 today because I can't do that. That's just, you know, the kid won't be there waiting for me. So now let me ask you, this is kind of a weird question, but I've always wondered, like, we've got major traffic issues in Florida because there's construction everywhere all the time. Uh How do you deal with that as a bus driver, like, when you're running late, when there's an accident, when there's some issue affecting your route? Well, certain, I I mean, in my yard, I'm lucky we have uh, what we call a base that we call to and we say, hey, there's this and this going on, so we're going to be late, and they call the school. Oh, okay. Um, we curse. <laughs> we, we curse this road construction and stuff because it always seems like during the summer they don't even touch anything. Right. The minute, the minute school starts, forget about it. Yeah, that's. I don't understand that. We we see that down here too. We're like, what? What's down here? It's like the snowbirds. So everyone that comes down for the winter, we're like, why can't you get this stuff done when the roads aren't at capacity? Exactly. I don't know. Exactly. We we have the same problem and you know, accidents and stuff like we've had for some reason some odd reason the past few weeks it's like some of my roads have been closed. So I had I had, you know, a road closed and then I had another road closed so I couldn't get to a kid. So now being in the age of COVID, it's different than it used to be. It used to be you have to drive through that sign. <laughs> wow. Close. You have to make somebody get your attention, you know, get their attention and make sure they let you through so you can pick up that child. But now it's like you just tell them, I can't get down this road. This kid is there. You need to call the school. And the school will call them and let them know that if they want their kid to school, they need to drive them. <laughs> <laughs> well, now if. So, so last parting words of advice. Do you have any advice for maybe other drivers? Because I know I always, I always put, tag you on Facebook. We have a lot of problems in Florida with people running through the stop, and oh, that is the worst. and they and we've had several kids killed in the last year. So how how can we as drivers? What can we do to be more cognizant besides putting a stupid phone down? What can we do as drivers to help bus drivers? I mean, honestly, if you see those yellow lights flashing, stop. It doesn't have to be red for you to stop. Stop. Pay attention. Watch. You know, the school bus driver is going to be signaling to the kid before the kid crosses. You know, some some teenagers don't listen. It, it's, you know, I mean, it's pure. It, it is what it is. Kids don't listen sometimes, and they will just go across. Stop when you see a big yellow school bus. Yeah. <laughs> you know, with the lights flashing. I mean, it's not so hard to see. Don't be in such a rush to get to work. That being in such a rush to get to work could possibly get you, you know, in trouble, maybe even in jail for vehicular homicide because you're not paying attention. Well, and unfortunately, that's been an issue down here that the people that do those kind of crimes. They, they'll have to live with it for the rest of their lives, but it seems like the judges go very easy. Like, you know, some of them get off on probation and, you know, the, the families are left to pick up the pieces and there's no justice. It's very frustrating. I, I post that kind of stuff because I want to make people aware of it, but I get very angry about it because I feel for those families. It is very, it, it is very sad. And, and the sad thing is, is that, you know, a, a lot of people just don't even take it seriously. They're like, oh, whatever. You know, up here, we're, they're more strict about that stuff. But it's still, it's, you know, we're in the day and age where it's the blame game, too. You know, the right. first thing they do is say, oh, it's the bus driver's fault. I mean, we're, we're trained. <clears throat> we are trained. Um, we do at least eight hours of training each year. Boy, I'm mandatory to do that. But most of us try to do 10 hours of training each year. And before that, we have so many training things that we have to do. We have to pass all these tests and everything just to become a bus driver. So we are trained drivers. And we know that those other people aren't. But still, just be aware of your surroundings. That's all we ask. And then for for our guests, 
I mean, for our listeners, what do you have any advice for parents like on how to send their kids to school safely? Because another issue we've had is actually, sadly, kids getting killed at the bus stop or kids mm-hmm. even getting kidnapped at the bus stop. Do you have any safety tips for parents on how to keep their kids safe if they have to work and can't be with them? I mean, you know, if your child has to go out to a bus stop, you know, by themselves, it, like, say, say, like, I mean, most bus stops nowadays, you usually have either a group bus stop or you have, you know, somebody, a bus stop where we're picking you up right at your door type of thing. So if you are worried about the fact that your kid is going to be alone, make your kid wait at the door so that they can see what's going on. You know, make them wait at the door. You know, let the bus driver know. Let, you know, communicate with your bus driver. That's, you know, that is real key. If you, if you feel like there's something strange, like there's somebody strange in the neighborhood, let your bus driver know. Because we are aware. Yeah. <laughs> we, that's what we're looking for. We're looking for all that stuff. When you're waiting at your bus stop, stay 10 feet away from the curb at all times. Wait for your bus driver to cue you to get onto the bus. They, we usually have, like, up here, I'm not sure about down in Florida, but up here we have the universal bus driver sign, which is a thumbs up, letting the child know it's okay to cross. If you cross in front of, you know, the bus, you stay 10 feet away from the bus at all times. You need to, you know, you need to be aware. The children need to be aware of what they're doing also. Before they cross, even though I'm giving the thumbs up, it's always a good thing for them to look, you know, across the street, you know, backwards and forwards, look both ways. Make sure there's nothing coming that I can't see. Well, it's it's crazy out here in my neighborhood. Like, I, when I'm leaving early, I don't leave that often early, but when I do... <laughs> Like, I I watch the kids, like, I'm, like, you know, looking who's around. Because in Florida, you know, there's a lot of weirdos down here. So, you know, I'm always, like, really mindful of the bus stops, who's at the bus stops and who's looking around. But I've seen people on my road, which is, you know, supposed to be 35 miles an hour, pass buses who are stopped. Like, they just pass a bus and they don't even think anything about it. Yeah, I've had that happen so many times. And back, in, back when I first started... We used to be able to write down your license plate and give it to the registry. <laughs> now, now you like that'd be probably half your day. I can't imagine how. Yeah, that's oh, crazy. Yeah, we do, and we have cameras on all of our buses. So, I mean, if somebody goes through bad enough, we will definitely send it to the registry. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, before we used to write it down, and then we used to hand it in. Now we're not so much because the registry said that you know they were too overloaded. <laughs> you know? The DMV said that. Yes. Wow. They said that we were giving us, we were giving them too many uh, tickets. So the so the Massachusetts DMV is even crankier than when I lived up there. Oh my god, it's awful. <laughs> <laughs> it's horrible up here. Ah, well, thank you for being with us today, Penny. It was a delight to talk to you, and thank you. I think you've provided some really good insight for any parents listening to the show, and. Thank you for having me. And just remember, there is a school bus driver shortage. So if you are a mother that's at home or a father that's at home that's looking for a job to basically do here and there and not take up your whole time and get paid very well, please look out to your local bus company. They will love to have you. That's a good point because, yeah, we see that on the news a lot down here. Um, Mm -hmm. So so honestly, do you – I'm not working right now. Is this something that you feel like is calling me? <laughs> you? <laughs> I'll take that I as a no. About you, but <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, Penny. It was great talking to you. And this is my sign off for the first. <laughs> I was going to say, make a Yui. Bang a Yui. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs>